So let's see how to multiply these things. Take a look. I'm going to give you two functions. There's f of x. There's g of x. And it says determine the equation of these functions when you multiply them. Okay, simple. All you're going to say is h of x is going to be f of x, which is right here, x squared, times this guy. Oh, now, I'm going to write it like this for right now, but I want to show you a couple things that you can do. Remember, you can actually just leave it like this. You really, really can't. But remember one thing. You can actually bring this guy in. Remember? We brought that in. Think about what you did in grade 10 when you brought things out and you reduced. Remember, this has got a little squared here, which means this guy and this guy multiply. This gives you dun, da, 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 x to the fourth times 4x minus 12. Now, you can simplify this by, of course, taking a 4 out of here and make it even cleaner looking and just go like this and go, okay, that's going to be take the 4 out, 4x to the 4 bracket x minus 3. That's the same thing. Now, I'm cool with you leaving it this way. I really am. But I just wanted to show you that there's just some things that you can play around with to manipulate just to get something cool. Okay, so the next thing says, sketch this. Well, in order to sketch this properly, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to immediately bring up my calculator. And the reason why I'm going to do that is just to kind of help me out and remind me what do these graphs look like. Like, I know the x, the x squared is going to give me a parabola, but let's just do it anyways. We got a calculator. We paid for it. Let's just use it. Okay, so there's this one. And then our g of x, which, of course, is the square root of 4x minus 12. Let's just throw that in there. Let's see what we've got. Okay, there, wow. Okay, there's our two little functions. And of course, our domain's going to be restricted again right here because think about it. Nothing in this red graph it appears after this point. So our new graph, h of x, is going to probably start right there. There's nothing going to be out here. Okay, so with that in mind, let me clean this up. Let's take a look at a few things. Let's concentrate on this graph for a second. They're a blue graph. If you concentrate on our blue graph, this one here, okay, you know and I know, yeah, there it is. Well, let's start graphing it out here, okay? Zero, zero. And we're just squaring. So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, and so on. And then you can put the sister points down. And if you don't remember what the sister points are, again, it's up to you. Go back to that math 20-1 and check out how to do this. But there's my nice little parabola. Oh, how pretty. Now, remember this guy? Did you notice something interesting about him? Okay, let me show you. On the graph, look, look. Where does he start? One, two, three. Why? Why does he start there? Do you remember restrictions on the radical? Yes, math 20-1, we said there were restrictions on the radical. Check it out. There's 4x minus 12. Remember, 4x minus 12 has to be bigger than or equal to 0. Because if it wasn't, it'd be negative and you can't square root. Ah, that's why this thing starts at a certain point. Bring the 12 over. Look at this. Bring that 12 over. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. And look, x has to be greater than and equal to 3. That's why it starts right here. You see... Ah, I see it too now. Now, the other thing I want to look at is let's start looking at some points out here, and let's just draw this accurately. Well, how do I figure out all of these crazy points out here like this? Well, the way you do it, and again, let me clean this up, is go over to here and check out this guy right there. That's this table on your calculator. That'll give you some nice points to deal with. Okay, second table. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Error, 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 error. That means, check it out, nothing exists until you get to x equals to 3. Cool. Okay, so that kind of tells us some interesting stuff. Now, take a look at the next one. 4 is 2. I'm looking at the red graph here. Okay, so when x is 4, y is 2. So there's another point that we can plot on here. When x is 4, y is 2. So let's put this in green. There it is. Boom. There's another beautiful point. Let's find another point. Okay. Going back to our calculator. Remove this down. Those are ugly. Look at how, oh, there's a nice one. Seven at four. Awesome. And look how much more accurate 
our graph is becoming. 7 at 1, 2, 3, 4 is right there. So we're going to get a graph that arcs out like that. Beautiful. Now we've got a fairly decent and fairly, fairly, fairly accurate graph. Granted, my nice little coffee jittered hands. All right. Now we want to also graph h of x. Now we could do it several different ways. And let me show you a couple different ways. Let me clean this up because we need the room, obviously. Okay. Now, probably the best way to do this is again a table of values. So let's just do a quick table of values. X was now remember. Go back to your calculator and pick some nice X's. Look, the X's I would choose would be 3, I would choose 4, and I would definitely choose 7. Okay? Why? Because they give you nice numbers all the way through like this. Pretty numbers, easy numbers to graph. Got it? Okay. So, with that in mind, let's go. 3. Here we go. X is 3. X was 4. And X was 7. Let's look at f of x. Well, f of x is easy because it's just x squared. So this is going to be, I'll put it in blue, is 9. This guy's going to be 16. That one's going to be 49. Beautiful. Awesome. The other one we're going to put in green. So this is now g of x. And I'm not going to throw them into this equation, although you could probably blast them off really, really fast. But I'm just going to take them right off the calculator. I know this one was 0. And if you remember also, hey, wait a second. We got them right here, don't we? We did this earlier. So 4 is at 2. 7 was at 4. Oh, how pretty. Now, let's multiply these guys together to give us our h of x. We could just do it that way. Well, check it out. 9 times 0, 0. 16 times 2, 32. 49 times 4. Oh, my goodness. This thing's going to get really, really big, really, really, really fast. Okay? Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's 196. Now, what's interesting here is we're going to put our zeros, 0 down. There's 3, 0. Remember, the x's don't change. 3 comma 0, there's our first one. 4 comma 32, holy smokes. This thing's going to be way off the graph, right, right out here somewhere. Way, way the heck up here. So basically, this guy's just going to look like a rocket going straight up into space. Look at that. So there's your new sketch for h of x. What if you were one of those people who said, well, I don't really buy that. I want to actually see it. Again, pull up your calculator. Let's clean this up, get all these dots off here. Okay, pull up your calculator, get into y equals 2, go down to a new graph, right, and put f of x times g of x. Remember, that's just using your vars. y1 times y2, there it is, oh, graph it. And look, now here's the flaw of this wonderful calculator again. It doesn't go all the way down to here. That's one of the reasons why when you plot this manually, you can actually see that there's that point right here. Why it doesn't put this little section in here, I have no idea. I think one of the reasons why is because no, no offense to TI, but TI is probably using the same formulas and the same programming it did way, way back when this calculator was invented in 1986. So there's a bit of a design flaw of the calculator. Plus, remember, your calculator is not HD, so it probably won't show this little section of the graph. That's why it really pays to do this manually like that. Now, state the domain and range. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so check out the domain now. The domain for this guy, again, all values of x such that, now tell me, look, remember, it was based on the fact that this guy restricted the graph. There is no x out here. So you start it at x having to be bigger than or equal to 3. And of course, x can be an element of r afterwards. Okay, now let's look at the range. Check out the range. The range started here, started at the 0. Right? Why? Because all of these graphs started at zero. So all the values of y such that y has to be greater than or equal to zero, and y could be an element of r as well. So you learned something, didn't you?